Today I'm going to show you how to add a dimensional door on one of your house blocks from Kimberbell's Cup of Cheer Quilt Project. If you are following along in the book, I'm going to do this with the blue house found on page 47. The house and the dimensional door are done in two parts, part A and part B. Even though I'll be walking you through the steps in today's video, you can also find these particular instructions not only in the book, but as a digital file as well. One of the benefits of having the file on your computer is of course the ability you're gonna have to be able to zoom in on all the detailed steps. We will first make the door and then move on to part B where we will attach it to the applique house. Before we begin, please verify that you've cut a piece of Kimberbell's shape form interfacing at exactly one and a quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. Once that's done, it's time to go ahead and begin with part A by hooping our wash away stabilizer. Stitch the placement outline for the door, then place the shape form interfacing down, being sure to cover the inner placement line, but not exceeding the outer placement line. Tape in place and then stitch the tack down line. Now stitch the door placement line and place one piece of your door fabric right side up. Now stitch the tack down line. Next, stitch the inner door outline and then the doorknob fill. Stitch the inner door detail. Now turn the hoop to the back and place one piece of the door fabric with the right side facing up and tape those corners. Place your hoop back onto the machine to stitch the tack down line and the hinge stitches. We're now going to trim away some of the fabric, but it's important not to trim the fabric between those hinge lines, but just around the outer edges. Again, not between the hinge lines. Then turn the hoop to the back and repeat this step by trimming some of the fabric, but just like you did in the front, you're not going to stitch between those hinge lines. Since you'll see the front and the back of the door when it opens, it's important to change your bobbin thread to match your top thread. Once you've done that, stitch the door satin outline and then remove the block from the hoop. You're now ready for part B. If you're following along in the book, I'm now on pages 48 and 49. I've already pre-quilted my background fabric using Kimberbell's background quilting files. This is an optional step, but if you're interested in doing background quilting on your embroidery machine, you can find more information on my video titled, How to Do Background Quilting on Your Embroidery Machine. As you can see, I've also gone through a majority of the applique steps to create my house. But now it's time to add that small pocket that is behind the door, as well as the darling dimensional door that opens and closes. I've just completed step 18 on page 49, where I did a placement line for the door base. After that is stitched, place your door fabric uh, right side up, and then stitch the tack down line and pocket placement tick marks. Place the door pocket with the folded edge on the pocket placement line. Tape across the fold of the door pocket and stitch the door pocket tack down line. Trim the door base and the door pocket fabrics close to the stitch line and then stitch the door base decorative outline. Now it's time to add your door. Simply center the door onto the door base by aligning the vertical lines on the hinge side of the door with the vertical line on the door base. Tape the right side of the door from the top to the bottom. Place two thin straight pins at the intersection of the hinge marks and the vertical stitch line on your door. Place the pins straight down through all the layers to the back. Then turn the hoop to the back and check that the pins go exactly through the stitch line that's on the back of your stabilizer. Now turn the hoop to the front. Stick the pins into the wool felt mat or an ironing board to keep the pins from shifting. Lift up the excess door fabric between the hinges to verify that the pins go exactly through the stitching in the door and door base. Adjust the door if necessary to line it up correctly and then tape the hinge fabric in place and remove your pins. It's now time to make sure your door is aligned just right. It's really easy to do. First, unthread the machine needle and keep your presser foot raised as you move the stitching that's on the machine forward about seven stitches and then drop your needle. Check that the needle aligns with the stitch line on the door. Move the stitching on the machine forward again to the middle of the door. Now drop your needle to check for alignment. 
And finally, move the stitching on the machine to the bottom of the door. Drop your needle to check for alignment and adjust the door if needed. After this step, be sure to return to the beginning of machine step 22. Now, just a quick note. If you did do your background quilting first, your machine step number may be different at this point. So simply return to where you are stitching the door hinge line. Now that your door is aligned, it's time to re-thread your needle, lower your presser foot, and go ahead and stitch the door hinge line like you see here. It's also time to verify that the door hinge line stitched directly on top of the previous stitching of the door and the door base. If it's lined up, then simply trim the excess door fabric. Finally, stitch the door hinge satin outline and remove your project from the hoop. Let's take a look at how sweet this little detail is in the quilt. As you can see, not only does the door open, but there's a little pocket behind there that is perfect for a tiny treat or a note for your advent quilt.